we're doing our 100th podcast, and there's been a recurring theme that we come back to, whether it's counterfeit games, re- misrepresentation of, of game cartridges uh, that are sold on eBay or come into Luna, for example, and it's always labels that are reproduction. And there's a reason we talk about bringing this knowledge to the community is that there's a potential for people to be, to be uh, ripped off. There's a potential for deception with just the existence of these labels. Uh, and we usually talk, speak about this when it comes to games that are very expensive. Flintstones Dinosaur Peak. Little Samson's been a recurring theme. Stuff like uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day has come up when we talked about uh, you know, GameStop taking in fake games and selling, giving them back out to people. And it's almost never games that are below like $80. Right. And, and your experience coming into the shop. They're always a very expensive games. And most of these label, uh, labels are available freely online. And these are the labels that are also used on the counterfeit market at AliExpress. Right. These games are made. So when a prominent YouTuber uh, talks about relabeling video games, it, it, it gives me um, pause to see how they're representing it, but also I want to I want to see how the, the the audience of that YouTuber is interpreting the data. And so, eight bit guy recently who does great work. He's mostly I guess centered on com- uh, computers for the most part, but he talked about relabeling uh, video games, uh, and he used two examples. He used Pitfall for Atari Twenty Six Hundred and uh, the Acclaim WF WrestleMania on the NES. Um, and it, it became a minor story just because he has so many subscribers. Because he has half a million subscribers. So people, a lot more people than usual, are now finding out about relabeling video games. So there's been a debate that's started from this. And if you've never listened to the podcast before, you probably know where Ian and I are coming from to begin with. But I wanted to get Ian's opinion on this since he actually had a tweet about this in, in response. Yeah, um... I, I retweeted someone who said that this person was, uh, and I retweeted a friend of mine. It was in the moment, um, and, and the person was like, you know, this is the worst person in the world. And obviously that was sarcasm. That's hyperbole. It was hyperbole. Um, and I don't actually believe that. But I, I, I do feel that um, it, it doesn't really matter what you're relabeling. Um, I, I, I can't stand behind it um there were certain things i believe the person said or tried to compare it to like if a guy compared it to when you're putting you know when you're refinishing parts on an old car or when you're cleaning an old coin those right. are the two or, examples he gave but i don't know anyone who really cleans old coins um you know i try to i try to look at it from a comic book standpoint okay okay if if you try to um fix a comic book or re-ink parts of a comic book, you know, and get it graded, it immediately destroys the value of that it, comic it book. It at, at least halves the value, if not more. Right. Um, you were talking about replacing the covers on well, comic books. Well, that's what I thought was the most... If you're going to make that's, a comparison... That's an apt... That's an if, apt. If you're going to make a comparison between anything and replacing labels uh, on a video game, the, the closest comparison to me, and the fairest one, not cars that are 60 years old, um, that cost you know seventy five thousand dollars just to find an example of one. Right. The closest example to me would be comic books because comic books, uh, the value, a huge chunk of it, um, is based upon how the cover is. Yes, the inside of the pages do matter a little bit, but by and large, it is the cover, and there is a certain grade of of level of if damage that that um, predicts the, the value and condition of it, correct? So for a game, we're not there yet. There's no established, this is a 8.0 label. There's not a 6.0. Right. There's not a 5.0. That, we're not there yet. The, the hobby and the community is still maturing to get to that point. But I, I do know this, though, that if you have a replacement comic book cover, the comic becomes worthless. It becomes poor condition. It is the same as if that comic has no cover at all. Right, exactly. Which it, makes it a point. 0.5 out of 10 scale, which makes it like 1% of the value of the comic. That is a fact. Um, when it comes to video games, we are not there yet as community to decide what is totally uh, acceptable in terms of the value and condition. Of course, you can do whatever you want with your own game, and no one is arguing that. And, and, and that's never been our argument. We're not saying that people can't do what they want with their own property. I just don't agree with with sure. that practice. Sure, and, and it's funny that some people in the comments of the, of Epic Guys video were saying, well, you're going to have the the uh, you know the collectors and the people that are stuck up that are going to be railing against us. And it's like, well, it matters to us. It affects us. It doesn't affect you. It affects Ian when you have people coming in with counterfeit games with fake labels that exist. It affects his job. 
It, it you know it, it doesn't affect your life at all right and and i think that's why i take such an anti stance on it is i really i always have to check the labels for expensive games sure. and i have to be as careful as i can and as i mean as labels get better there, there's always ways to tell sure and i'm good at it but it doesn't what worries me is now that people are looking at you know when i retweeted um that one tweet some i you know i said and i can't believe of all things it's wrestlemania that they're concerned about now i realize that you know um the acclaim and lgn game labels get really bad you know they're they're, they're shit labels For the later lj ones yeah yes. um but um you know, it's WrestleMania of all things. Like it's a three dollar game. It doesn't. Yeah, find a better copy. It doesn't need to look great. Um, I think I think that was my my main issue. It was, so that's my issue because yeah. now I have to start scrutinizing everything because the problem is, if I accidentally let a game with a repro label in, in ninety six percent of people don't give a shit. Whatever, I can clear that from my store. If I missed it, that's fine. But my, any, it's not just our business. Any retro video game store's business can take a credibility hit if they are caught selling repro la games with repro labels on them if they are not listed as sure. such. We're getting in a weird area here. And, and my issue is not the fact that he's doing it. It's the fact that he's not disclosing that when this is done... They're not. This is not done typically for three dollar and two dollar games. It's right. not worth your time. Your, your time and energy to to get the label printed and putting on is not worth it. You just find a better copy that exists. There's a million pitfalls out there. There's a million WF WrestleManias. When this is done, it's for that little Samson. It's for that uh, and counterfeit or not. It's for that destroyed Flintstones dinosaur peak that. In this condition, maybe I can get six hundred dollars, but now I put a better label on it. Now I think I can get a grand for it. That's the issue. Right. And it's not just you looking out for counterfeit games entirely. It's now you having to deal with someone bringing in a wild guns that you open up and say, that's the real ROM board, but it's not disclosed to you that the label's not, not authentic. Because we don't have a guide now to know that um, it, since that's a, a bad label, what's the value of this game? Right. It's uncharted territory. To me personally, the value would be at least half because I'm looking at it as that you might as well not have a label then if it's fake. It's it's it, the label's gone. Well, that's how I feel about it as well. Maybe even less than that, less than fake. I mean, less than less than half, like twenty five percent. We're not there yet. The difference between bringing up uh, cars and the car market is in that in the car collecting community, there is an accepted level of behavior when it comes to restoration. What's acceptable? The market has borne out what you can do with car classic cards it's the same thing with classic pinball machines sure. and everyone everyone in the pinball community a because it's very easy to tell but everyone people are proud to talk about the reproduction parts of the sure. new parts that are in a pinball machine sure it's 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 a different market where yes. that sort of thing is it's necessary because people are people are what are going to play that whereas I would look at cartridge condition as something more along the lines of, as we've talked about, cards or comic books or things like that. Plus, it's also scale. Yes. So we're talking about classic cars. We're talking about some of these cars, there may be only 10 that exist in the world. Sure. So, of course, if to get it running again or to look properly, you don't have a choice. You can't buy another classic car that's worth $350,000. If there's, I think, what? 250 to 400 no more than 400 stern stargazers out there a pinball, Same machine. With a pinball machine yeah you get it up and running so people can play it that's different that's a machine first of all too a pinball machine a car is a machine these are games with a label it's right. different like i said that's why i think a comic book is the best comparison sure if i find even an amazing fantasy 15 the first appearance of spider-man with a destroyed cover Instead of me doing a repro cover, it's probably worth my interest to find a better cover, you know, and, and buy another book. You know what I mean? It, it would make more sense if you're just looking at monetarily or even collectible value. So that's to me the issue is that if you're going to be talking about this, I think you should be informing the public that this is not done typically with cheap uh, common games. There's no point of doing that right. for the most part because you can find one online for two or three dollars, but it's for the expensive games, and that's what scares. Uh, people that not just collectors, people that sell it, because for the most part, 
as far as I know, there's no big collector that's okay with repro labels and, and saying that, okay, well, just, you know, just make sure that you tell the next person that comes along. As far as I know, I have not met a big collector that's a fan of that. No, and, 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 and it's it's always for the people who think here and now, like I said, there's no point in doing it because you're not going to increase the value. Uh, okay, it's not good to do it. I'm totally against doing it on the expensive games. I, I, I feel like we need to make that clear. That's awful. And there's no point in doing it on the cheaper games because you're not going to increase the value. But you could be ruining the reputation of another person who sells it if it's found out or a store if it's found out. Um, and then... Uh, Possession is nine-tenths of the law, right? That's the expression. Oh, but then um, people, people always say, well, we can do what we want. But it's like these people don't realize that accidents occur where they have to sell things to pay for things or uh, death occurs and people just stolen sell. games stolen games lost games in the mail people, whatever there's so many scenarios there's so many scenarios where this is no longer yours and now this game with a counterfeit label is out in the market when I search, it's not always going to be yours when I search for wild guns now on, on eBay I got to deal with now counterfeit games even though if they're saying they're saying they don't say counterfeit they say repros or custom right. which is counterfeit but now the real ones some of the real ones will say repro label so in my head i'm like why are you charging that 180 bucks yeah. you should be charging 50 bucks or 60 so the hobby's not there yet to really uh decide this but i do know the hobby has decided that repro labels by and large are bullshit when it comes to the collector's community and to people buying and selling them yeah. because there's more harm that's happening than good 